So, about a year ago, Ghana penned a deal to develop its own SkyTrain in Accra. Fast forward to today and things are moving at an impressive pace. Contractors have been picked out, travel routes finalised and money should finally start exchanging hands by this year of 2020, with construction following shortly thereafter. And it couldn't come sooner, the city of Accra is quite congested and one look at the planned travel routes for the SkyTrain shows you how the Ghanaian government wants to alleviate this problem once and for all. Many of the initial lines and stops are plotted across the greater Accra region. This should encourage more people living in the suburbs to commute into the city by train instead of car and possibly lure more residents away from the city into the outskirts as better travel links should help increase its overall appeal and attract a lot more investment. But before we look more into its impact, let's actually take a moment to figure out what exactly a SkyTrain is. A SkyTrain can be considered as light rail. How it is distinguished from other modes of rail transport such as the monorail is that it can run on conventional rail gauges with an additional set of rails as the power source below called a third and sometimes fourth rail. This allows for the removal of the conductor rail above and smaller tunnel sections which means cheaper infrastructure. A number of major cities across the world already play host to the SkyTrain such as Bangkok and Yakarta. A core part of what helps the SkyTrain function is the linear induction motor. A linear induction motor is a motor with no moving parts. It uses a permanently magnetized track to create a magnetic pull. This is complemented by running electricity through magnets in a coil unit that runs above the track rail and that can be turned on, off and reversed using a magnetic force. It alternates between north and south pools that then create a forward motion. The train track is a permanently electrified rail. This supplies power to the coiled magnet unit in the base of the train carriage called the linear induction motor. By turning on alternating positive forces, this pulls the unit forward along the track. By using the same mechanism to create negative forces, this also creates a stopping motion which helps to act as a brake. Going beyond its functionality, the Accra Sky Trade is exactly what the development doctor ordered because the fact is you simply cannot cultivate a major city without some sort of overground or underground rail service. It's unrivaled in its ability to move large numbers of people from one side of the city to another and the Aqua Sky Train will help facilitate Ghana's increasingly urban population, open up new markets for workers and businesses and help support the country's growing tourism industry and it will do all of this quickly and cheaply. However, the rail is not without its pitfalls. It may not even be fit for purpose and it could end up sharpening the divide between the haves and the have-nots of the country even more. But in order for us to understand how, as is the case with most of Africa, we have to go back to the story of colonialism. Accra hasn't always been the big deal that it now portrays itself as. In the past, there were other places which were more prominent and bigger than Accra. But in 1874, the British captured Accra and then made it the capital of what was then known as the Gold Coast in 1877. Then, under colonial rule, the city was mapped out in a way that segregated the British and other Europeans from the native population. The colonial class settled in eastern Accra in relatively low density spaces with better public services and infrastructure on elevated ground. The native population on the other hand occupied land in western Accra which boasted much higher rates of population density while receiving much less in terms of public investment. And even though colonialism in Ghana is a relic of the past, its legacy persists as for many in the city of Accra not much has changed when you look at the continued gap between the former European section of Accra in the east and that of the former exclusively African part of the city to the west. Overcrowded slums in the west such as Jamestown still lack adequate investment, planning and oversight to the point where some sections of the city still struggle to access decent flush toilets and in some ways it would appear as if that sky train with all its pomp, scale and ceremony will not do much to help those who need it most. One cursory glance at the planned travel routes illustrates this well. Many of the planned stations are situated along the eastern part of the city, with there also being a separate extensive line in the CBD area of Accra and across the greater Accra region, but barely any of western Accra will be covered by the rail. So how will the construction of this help raise living standards for the poorest of the city? And if authorities hope to answer this by moving slum residents away from the west and into the suburbs, what are they going to do to ensure that the suburbs have the facilities 
abilities and resources to support a shift of this scale. Staying on that point though, what if Ghana is trying to do this? Move people out of the slums into the suburb. Is this too ambitious? Another example of wishful thinking from technocratic bureaucrats? Perhaps not. The roots in themselves are forward thinking in nature and plans to facilitate an expanding city. Case in point, look at traffic data collected by the Ghanaian government. As expected, the part of Accra with the highest recorded vehicle volumes is in the southwestern part of the city within the two inner rings where many of the slums lie. But once you look further to the outer ring, towards the outskirts, deeper into the greater Accra region, an opportunity presents itself. As you circle from east to west on the outer ring, you notice a number of things. Volume generally increases as you move further west and the area closest to the southwest records the highest recorded vehicles. Movement between the three rings, indicating a large commuter population in and around this area who may travel from the outskirts, where land is cheaper and more plentiful, into the city for work and business already. So with that said, it may make perfect sense for planners to identify and build on this pattern and support its expansion in a way which brings development to more of the region and relieves the slums at the same time. Even though the Accra Sky Train doesn't cover much of the slum, perhaps that's not the point as the train may end up becoming the much needed bridge for residents to finally make their way out of the slums. The video you just watched is part of our new Concrete News Channel platform. We'll be making videos covering Africa's biggest and most pioneering upcoming infrastructure projects as more cities and development spring across the continent. Subscribe and stay locked in with the CNC, the only ones delivering you in-depth and fresh breakdowns of major construction and infrastructure developments across Africa.